All right, so before you, we have my wife's 2016 Dodge Charger Scat Pack 392. I know, that's a mouthful to say, but it is what it is. This car we ordered brand new in April of 2016, took delivery of it in June of 2016, and between then and now, which is making this video, is July of 2022, we have racked up over 155,000 miles on this car. And so today's review is gonna be a little different than a typical review because we're gonna focus on the reliability of this vehicle, what the ownership experience has been for the last six years and 155,000 miles. Obviously we like the car because if we didn't, we wouldn't rack up so many miles on it and still have it. So let's start by going over some of the features of the car and then we'll go ahead and dive into what the ownership experience has been like. So for starters, the Scat Pack model, there's a lot of debate going on online on whether or not it's an SRT or an RT. I don't care what anybody says, the true answer is this is an RT. It's a very fancy RT, but nonetheless, it is still just an RT model. Because it has a 392 power plant, which is produced by SRT, doesn't automatically make it an SRT product. There are a lot of options and features that separate the SRTs from the RTs and the Scat Packs. So in 2016, the Scat Pack, you could only get it with the 392. You could not get it with the 5.7, which you can in the later uh, model years. But you also go ahead and it has features like four piston Brembo brakes on all four corners that make it stop incredibly well. A little ca caveat here, side note, uh, we are still on the original pads and rotors on this car after 155,000 miles. Now, I should also note that of those 155,000 miles, the amount of miles that are actually spent canyon carving or driving mountain roads and stuff were really gonna put your brakes to the test. We don't do a lot of because I've got the Viper and the SRT4 for that, so we don't use this for that application. This is mostly for going on road trips, daily driving. I can't tell you how many trips to Vegas or Disneyland or Silicon Valley or Sonoma County or wherever we go that this car is made, but it's definitely a lot. From there, of course, as I mentioned, it's got the 392 Hemi V8 engine under the hood that is producing 485 horsepower backed by a Chrysler built Torque Flight eight speed automatic transmission. And uh, this one, is painted in B5 blue. And that is one of the main reasons why we got the Scat Pack. At the time for ordering this car, we had the option to go ahead and get a Hellcat, but the problem was by the time we were able to get an allocation for a Hellcat charger, because at the time the Hellcat charger was still really new, we wouldn't have been able to get it in B5 blue because the color was going away and it was about six months after the color was gonna be gone that we could have gotten a allocation for a Hellcat. So we got the Scat Pack plus on top of that, for the driving that we do and the type of activities we take the car for, the Hellcat was just overkill with its 707 horsepower and the 485 horsepower that this pushes out is more than enough for the type of driving that we do. Now, of course, there is one thing that we did change on the exterior, and that is the hood. This is not the factory Scat Pack hood. This is the Hellcat hood. My wife wanted the Hellcat hood, so she got a Hellcat hood. We tried to have it installed when we took delivery of the vehicle, but unfortunately there was a supply chain issue at the time. And so it was about a month after delivery of the, ve of the vehicle that we went ahead, sent it back to the dealership, had them install the Hellcat hood. But since then, We've absolutely loved it. And having the Hellcat hood on here just adds that just a little bit extra to it. Um, the front fascia, the rear fascia, the bodywork shares that with the SRT. Uh, they didn't have time to develop their own for the Scat Pack model, but that's all right. I personally love the lines on this car and the body kit that the SRT has on the Scat Pack. I, of course, also love the emblems with the little B logo. Being the vintage Mopar guy that I am, having the Challenger and the Cuda and all the others that I've had over the years, having that nod to the old school, I definitely appreciate. Now, other modifications that we've done to the vehicle besides the hood are pretty limited. I, we've put a Mopar cold air intake on under the hood, as well as done a mid muffler delete on this car, which is a very common practice on these cars and you can't really beat it. I, it's the best bang for the buck for the exhaust system. You take the car down to your local muffler shop and for about a hundred bucks, they whack out the mid mufflers, put a piece of straight pipe in there and the car's a lot louder. Now, one of the nice things though, is by doing it this way, you still have the resonators and you still have the valves. So cruising down the freeway at 70, 80 miles an hour, 
It's still nice and quiet. It's not obnoxiously loud. And it sure beats the price tag of any of the aftermarket systems that costs upwards of two or three thousand dollars plus installation so you can't go wrong with mid muffler delete that's why it's so popular and it's why we did it within first thousand miles of owning the car now let's go ahead since we're out here on the outside of the car let's talk about some of the cosmetic issues that we've had over the last six years it should be noted that this car is not a garage queen this car sits in the driveway we live here in the california sierra foothills it does get to be 110 plus degrees in the summer in the August month, of course. Uh, so overall, the paint itself has held up really well. There have been a couple of things that we've noticed. Uh, for starters, the cowl piece underneath the windshield wipers has started to degrade a little bit. So I'll be replacing that here in the next couple of years, most likely. And then on the door panels, most per predominantly on the passenger front door panel, it's starting to lift and separate. So we're starting to see it on the other three as well, but the most noticeable is here on the passenger door. So I need to go ahead, either order new door panels or pull these apart, re-glue them, put them back together. But other than that, from the exterior, the car has been really reliable and has been held up really well. We did have some issues uh, with the headlights, I think about 50,000 miles or so ago, but it turned out there was nothing wrong with the headlights. It was actually the fuses themselves were starting to burn out. So we swapped out the fuses, problem solved. Other than that, everything from the outside, other than tire changes, which were on our fourth set of tires, it's been amazing from a cosmetic standpoint and durability. All right, so let's go ahead, shift gears and check out the interior of this charger. All right, so considering you spend the majority of your time on a with a vehicle in the interior, it's important that you enjoy the interior of the car. And on the charger, my wife and I absolutely love the interior. And actually the interior on the Scat Pack is another one of the big reasons why we chose it over the SRT or the Hellcat. And that has primarily to do with the way the seat covers are done with the combination of leather and the suede with the B logo embroidered in the back of the seat. And the seats are well bolstered, they're comfortable, and they make for a really good long distance driving vehicle. And so that's why we take this car to pretty much anywhere on all of our road trips because it's so comfortable and easy to drive and not have to worry about hurting your back or getting restless leg syndrome or whatever. I mean, the car just functions really well and it looks really nice. So of course we've put in the dash cover in here just to protect the dash pad itself and make it look a little nicer, I guess. Uh, we like the door panels with the leather inserts. Uh, one thing I do wish on these cars, but again, of course, at the price point, what do you expect, is on the door panels and the dash, having the rubberized uh, vinyl finish. Um, it's okay, but I'd prefer if it was wrapped in leather or suede or something. And if it really bothered me that much, I could take it to upholstery shop and have them fix it. But overall, really happy with the interior design. Um, you've got, of course, your two physical gauges, your tack that goes up to 7,000 RPM and your speedometer that goes up to 180 miles an hour. And then you've got a digital instrument cluster in the middle that you can go ahead and change to be whatever you want to have displayed. We typically have displayed the fuel economy um, and the mile range that we have on a tank. Uh, the infotainment system, the Uconnect, uh, has really got a lot of great features in it. There's a ton of features in it that we never use. I mean, predominantly we use the phone, the nav, and the HVAC controls, as well as the radio. And that's it. On the steering wheel, you've got a lot of uh, different controls going on as well. You've got your adaptive cruise control settings where you can go ahead and set not only just cruise control, but being adaptive, you can set your distance between you and the car in front of you. And so if your car in front of you speeds up or slows down, you go ahead and match that speed. And so that's a really nice feature. You can also go ahead and adjust the uh, digital instrument cluster from the steering wheel, as well as operate your phone through the Bluetooth. And they have the controls on the steering wheel for that as well. So really well thought out. You've also got the flappy paddles here on the steering wheel if you wanna use those. We almost never do, we just leave it in automatic mode. There's actually a lot of things in here that you have that we have hardly ever or never used. Like the sport button and the super track pack button. I'm, they make the car do different things and we've never used them. I know a lot of you out there are saying that's a waste, but 
We've put 155,000 miles on this car and have loved every minute of it. I'm not using every single feature. That's quite all right. Now, there are a couple of other features in here that are pretty cool. They've got your um, accident avoidance feature. Now, this works pretty well. Most of the time, if you happen to like look away from the road for a second or whatever and something pops up in front of you, it'll hit the brakes and alert you that there's you're about to hit something. So that's pretty nice. We have had a couple instances where it's... Uh, acted up a little bit and engaged when it shouldn't have. And so we've had to power through it in order to actually avoid getting into a collision. Um, but in 155,000 miles in six years, I can count the number of that, those times on my hand. Uh, it also has lane uh, departure assistance. So if you start wandering off the road, um, it'll actually yell at you and uh, start correcting the steering uh, inputs and tell you, hey, put your hands back on the wheel and pay attention. So that's kind of a neat feature as well. Uh, the overall, from a reliability standpoint, everything in here, for the most part, has worked extremely well. The Uconnect, we have had a couple of issues in the past, um, but they've just been brief software glitches that have corrected themselves. Uh, usually we've had a couple of times when it has acted up, the stereo just doesn't play. Um, we have had some delays on startup for when it recognizes the SD card for the music, but usually within a minute or two of starting the vehicle, the SD card is recognized and it goes ahead and plays. So a little bit of a, a, a nuisance once in a blue moon have we had problems with the, the Uconnect, but nothing that we've actually even taken the car to the dealership to even have them look at. So overall, from the interior standpoint, other than the door panels starting to have that lifting issue, everything has worked great. Everything has held up really well during these last six years and 155,000 miles. So really happy with that. Let's go ahead now and take the car for a spin and talk further about what the maintenance has been like and the other concerns from a reliability standpoint and what it's been costing us for the ownership since day one. So the Scat Pack Charger made its debut at the 2014 SEMA show in Las Vegas. And oddly enough, it, when they debuted it there, they debuted it in B5 Blue. And so that was where my wife and I first saw the Scat Pack Charger and instantly fell in love with it. And so we wanted to buy one right then and there, but unfortunately, the beginning of 2014, we bought our first house. And so money was definitely a little tight at that point, so um, we weren't able to order one brand new. Plus, at the time, my wife was considering wanting a SRT8 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and so I told her, I was like, look, it's going to be a couple of years either way. I said, but I'm not going to be able to afford, likely, a brand new Greek Grand Cherokee in a couple of years, but I could afford a brand new Scat Pack 392 charger. So your options are either get a brand new charger or a slightly used uh, Jeep. And so made a, went ahead and made the conscious decision that we're going to go ahead and get a charger in B5 Blue. Now, at the time, she was driving a 2007 SRT8 Super V charger, which she loved, but it was getting up there in miles, not nearly as many miles we've gotten this, had about 110,000 miles on it. Uh, but when we bought that car, we bought it used and had 50,000 miles on it. Those first 50,000 were a little rough. So it wasn't as good a shape as I would have liked it to have been, and it was gonna be needing some work, so, but I digress. We went ahead, got rid of the charger, the Super V charger, and waited a couple years and got this. So how has this been from a reliability standpoint and a maintenance standpoint since we bought it brand new in 2016? And honestly, it has been absolutely incredible. It's been one of the best, if not the best cars I've ever owned. Uh, it's pretty much been regular maintenance since day one. That is all it's really needed. Uh, I think it was around 70 or 80,000 miles. We had to go and uh, got one of the axle seals replaced under warranty. Uh, it started to seep a little bit, nothing major, um, but it was starting to seep. And since the car was under warranty, we went ahead and re had it replaced. And so we did that around that time frame. Of course, at the big milestones, you're 30, 60, 90,000 miles. We've had the big services done and it's been really rock solid. Now there was one thing we had to go ahead and 
we did replace, I think it was one of the fuel tanks and a fuel pump assembly. And that was because um, we had a bad driveway we went through and it uh, tapped a fitting on the fuel pump, ended up cracking it. And so we talked to the dealership and they said, look, they said, we see this happen occasionally and you can either replace just the crack fitting uh, or you can replace everything uh, and historically we've seen even if you just replace the one a few months later you have to replace the other and then the labor you have to pay for twice so we just went ahead and bit the bullet and had it all done at once and that was like a $2,500 bill um, so that was a bit of a pill to swallow, but that wasn't a fault of the vehicle. That was really a fault of the driving conditions we put ourselves in. And so other than that, I, we've had to do tires. Um, we're on our fourth set. And from a tire standpoint, the Goodyear's have been the best tires for overall balance of performance and um, mileage. So the original Goodyear uh, RSAs, we got about 70,000 miles out of them. And then for um, the second set of tires, we decided to switch it up and give the Pirelli P0s a shot. And those were a terrible tire for this car. Uh, traction was way worse than it was for compared to the factory Goodyear's, especially in the rain. And then they only lasted 30,000 miles, which I expected them to have less of a mileage on them compared to the Goodyear's, but I did not expect to lose on the performance side of things. And so when it came time for tires on the third time around at 100,000 miles, we went ahead and went with the Goodyear uh, RSA 2s. And so the big difference between the RSAs and the RSA 2s is the RSA 2s are rated, I think, for like 180 miles an hour, where the RSAs are rated for like 150 miles an hour. And so we went ahead and put the RSA 2s on the second time, and they were an amazing tire. They're probably one of the best tires for overall balance on this vehicle. The downside to the RSA 2s compared to the RSAs is they only last 50,000 miles compared to the 70,000 we got out of the RSAs. And so when the RSA 2s wore out at 150,000 miles, we went ahead and replaced them with the OEM RSAs um, because quite frankly, uh, the number of times that I'm gonna be spending in this car above 150 miles an hour are pretty limited. And so there was no sense in spending the extra, I think it was like three or four hundred dollars to get the RSA 2s. They're gonna last 20,000 miles less. And so that's what we've got on here now. These should last until we have about 220,000 miles on the car. Now, over, other than that, um, we did have, uh, I've noticed a bit of a rattle has popped up in the exhaust. You can't really hear it inside the car, but you can definitely hear it outside the car. Um, so you can go ahead and you can hear that now. But other than that, the car has been really rock solid. And as I mentioned earlier about doing the mid muffler delete, it works so well. Cause I mean like right now we're cruising around the, at highway speeds and it's not obnoxious inside because the valves close and it just calms everything down. But when you want to hear it, you hit that loud pedal. that you want and it just sounds incredible. I a lot of cars you go through, you cut the mufflers out or whatever and it just sounds terrible, but not this car. You cut those mid mufflers out, best hundred dollars I think we've ever spent, especially on an exhaust system because exhaust systems get rather expensive as I mentioned earlier. So I, the car, I can't say enough good things about it. I mean, I've had, I've had pretty good luck with cars overall my entire driving life. So, Again, overall, an amazing car, couldn't be happier with it, and I would highly recommend them for anybody out there who's looking for a nice family sedan that has a lot of go-fast goodies and gets good performance and decent gas mileage. And so that's pretty much all of my thoughts on the Scat Pack 392 Charger for the long-term ownership. I am, things are holding up really well, it's super reliable, costs have been fairly minimal on it, and it's, 
really great car and I'm really looking forward to spending another 150,000 miles in this thing. Now, how long is it going to take to rack up the next 150,000 miles? That I don't know because like I said, we're getting another vehicle coming here in the next couple of months and so that's going to be the new workhorse and getting most of the miles driven on it and so we'll see how long it takes but if we get to another major milestone like a 250,000 miles 300,000 miles I'll definitely do an updated video to let you guys know how the car is still doing at that point in time and on that note guys if you like today's video don't forget to smash that like button give me that thumbs up it lets the YouTube algorithm know what that uh, you like these videos as well as lets me know what type of videos you like to see and produced and of course if you want to be kept up to date with all my other uploads I do all sorts of stuff on this channel reviews of cars go ahead go to events work on the cars all sorts of things go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell as well so that way YouTube will keep you up to date on all of my future uploads and on that note guys I will see you in the next video.